The following is the English translation of Pastor Meng and Wu's teaching on the book of Genesis, chapter 47 to 48, translated by Ray. Read the Bible every day so you will be full of faith. So today, let's read Genesis chapter 47 and 48. So here, Jacob is in his late age, and he's about to pass away and to go to see the Lord. But what does Jacob care at this moment? So if we look at the circumstances, now Joseph is the second in command in Egypt, and their entire family, they are in the land of Ramesses. And so there is a very nice arrangement for their life. They have their inheritance, they are influential, and also the dwelling place of all the kids, everything is arranged. And when everywhere is in famine, they are in Egypt, they are not just trying to make ends meet, but also they have great influence over Egypt. But is Jacob satisfied with all that? So today, let's read uh, chapter 47. When everything seems to work out for you, what are the things that you should still hold firmly? So in verse 1 and verse 2, Joseph, he has a lot of wisdom. So from among his brothers, he took five men and presented them to Pharaoh. So why did Joseph only brought five men? Because five is a lucky number in Egypt. So Joseph, he really know what does the Pharaoh likes and what does he doesn't like. So when Joseph, he's presenting his brothers and to have this conversation with Pharaoh, he know what's on Pharaoh's heart. So he only present five of them, which is the lucky number, the best number to talk to Pharaoh. And so Pharaoh is very happy about it. And then so he's asking, now Pharaoh said to his brothers, what is your occupation? Also, they answer to Pharaoh, your servants are shepherds as our fathers were. So now here the key is that five is the lucky number of Egypt. So Pharaoh is happy and he asks a question. But you know, shepherds, the Egyptians doesn't like shepherds because they think shepherds are very dirty. It's an occupation that is more humble. So they don't like that. So that's why Pharaoh just decided to give them a land so that they can be separate from the Egyptians. So here you can really see the wisdom of Joseph in every decision that he made. So where does this wisdom come from? It's all he learned in the prison. So remember in the previous lessons that we mentioned, every valley or lows in your life, everything that you experience, it's all God's arrangement for you in his wisdom. So please don't complain, but instead learn to appreciate and thank God to enjoy and to learn in those experience. And later on, you will realize that all these things can become your wisdom that will allow you to face and deal with the things in the future. So next they said, we have come to sojourn in this land, for there is no pasture for your servant's flock, for the famine is severe in the land of Canaan. And now please let your servant dwell in the land of Goshen. So Pharaoh, he arranged them to dwell in there. And next in verse 7, then Joseph brought in Jacob, his father, Father and stood him before Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. So imagine Jacob, he's a person who has been grabbing and fighting for so many years. Now he has this chance to meet the king of the richest nation at that time. But he didn't ask for anything, but instead he just blessed Pharaoh. So this is Israel. It's the time when his life has been trialed and cleansed and purified to be so mature in this moment. So their families, this is also our destiny in the future. Remember the dream of Joseph. He can be the second in command in Egypt. And then also when Jacob, when he's able to bless Pharaoh, these stories are not just about Joseph and Jacob, but it's about the entire Israelites. It's about all the chosen people of God. And it's also talking about in the eternity, the every single calling, the destiny and the promise for every son and daughter of God. This is exactly it. We are destined to be kings. We are destined to be able to rule and bless this land. We will do that in millennium and also in the new heaven and new earth in eternity. Remember, our calling is to be the glorious bride of Christ, but our calling is also to be the kings with the Lord. So is our life mature enough right now? 
one way to see it is that whether or not we can bless others. So today, if we come in front of someone who are in great power or in great authority, or maybe someone who can potentially help us or even completely transform our life, when we meet them, the first thing that came to my mind, are we thinking about, oh, this person can help us? Or if we are able to also think that, yes, in Christ, I am also able to bless them. This is a huge transformation of our mindset, that we are no longer fearful. We are not just looking for favor from men, and we are also not proud. But at the same time, we know that God, He has uh, His glorious entrustment and calling on us in our life. So next, Pharaoh asked Jacob, how many are the days of the years of your life? And in verse 9, Jacob said to Pharaoh, the days of the years of my sojourning are 130 years. Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life, and they have not attained to the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the day of their sojournings. So comparing to the standard of Egypt at that time, Jacob has lived a very long life. But when Jacob looked back on his life, he says it's few and evil and have not attained to the days of my fathers in the days of their soldier name. So now here Israel, he is so mature to a degree that he now fully understand what does it mean to have a good life? What's the meaning of true longevity? For a life to be good, it's up to our life has this deep connection and intimacy with the Lord. And what does it truly mean to have long life, to have longevity? It's that our days on earth is being regarded by the Lord. It's remembered by the Lord. So how much of that was counted and recorded by the Lord? Jacob, now he fully understand through all the removing, all the breaking in Jacob's life. After all the trials, he learned all these lessons. But as he reflects on the days when he was the youngest, the strongest, when he see that actually they are full of bitterness. And this bitterness actually comes from the fact that he hasn't realized, he hasn't known the God who calls him and bless him and the same God who promised to his father and his grandfather. And why does he say that his days are few? How much days in your life do you think it will be regarded in eternity by the Lord? Many of us maybe have the habit to take diary or maybe some person they will keep accounts. They will remember, oh, where I go, do I have travel this year? What are the things I do? And also how much money I make this year? If you really count, it seems like, oh, our life, our days are not just a few, but every single thing that happens in your life, how much of them is actually connected to God's kingdom? How much of them is related to our interaction with the Lord? Maybe you can always busy about the things that you want to do after like 70 years, 60 years, or even 80 years. But in those days, how much of them has regard in God's kingdom? So that's why Jacob, he knows that his years, his days are few and evil and have not attained to the days of his fathers in the days of their soldiering, because the place where we are truly living it's in eternity. And our days on earth, these 100 years, are all so-called sojourning. So their families, we have to ask ourselves, do you want, when you are old in your age, when you look back, you see everything is bitter and painful? I believe no one will want to be like that. Do you have this desire to be blessed? Do you want your life to be full of God's favor? Do you want every single day, every year, have regard in God's kingdom? Then please spend time to have intimacy with the Lord. Spend time to think about His kingdom. Spend time to engage in God's work in our life, to follow His guidance. So each time when I want to visit someone, when I care for someone, or when I serve, or even when I'm interceding for others, all of these will be be regarded in God's kingdom. And also, but at the same time, some people, they might be busy with a lot of serving and they use the serving to satisfy their own heart and they create a lot of activity at church. But maybe one day the Lord will say, truly, I say to you, I do not know you. You are the evil worker. Depart from me. But in contrary, maybe some seemingly nobody person, they are faithfully interceding for others in front of the Lord. They are faithfully serving, 
visit someone, care for others, send meals, nobody see it, or maybe even his serving is not within church, but it's actually regarded in God's kingdom. So this is something that we have to pray today. Lord, may my days in front of you is not bitter, is not painful, but instead in the days of my sojourning on earth, every single day can be regarded by you. So then verse 11, then Joseph settled his father and his brothers and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramesses, as Pharaoh had commanded. So indeed, this land now belongs to the Israelites, and then they expand from just one person to a family, to a clan, to a huge community, and then eventually become a kingdom. It all starts from here. And then in verse 12 to 18, Joseph is now ruling over the land. And this is the same thing that we will do in the end time and also the same thing that we will do in eternity. So through our wisdom, we will know how to arrange things, how to rule, and we will also allow everyone to know how to serve their Lord. Then in verse 28 and 29, And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. So the days of Jacob, the years of his life, were 147 years. So he lived in Egypt for 17 years. And verse 29, And when the time drew near that Israel must die, he called his son Joseph and said to him, If now I have found favor in your sight, put your hand under my thigh and promise to deal kindly and truly with me. Do not bury me in Egypt, but let me lie with my fathers. Carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burying place. He answered, I will do as you have said. And he said, Swear to me. And he swore to him. Then Israel bowed himself upon the head of his bed to worship God. So here, this is the end of his life. He was worshiping God. Here it says he bowed himself upon the head of his staff or his bed. It actually means he is worshiping. So bow himself upon the head of his staff, bow before the Lord. He worshiped God and then he passed away. So why don't he want to be buried in Egypt? Egypt is really good. You know, at that time, the famine ha has passed for many years already because he dwelt in Egypt for 17 years. So the famine has ended long ago. So if Jacob, he wants to went back to Canaan, he actually has this ability because remember his son is the second in command in Egypt. Why don't he come? Come back, you know, it's very easy for Joseph to let his father to went back to the land of Canaan. It's very easy. He just needs to drive him with the chariots. It's just not super difficult to back to the land of Canaan to their hometown. It's really easy. But Israel now he has been so mature to a degree that every single step in his life, he wants to live in God's will. So remember when before he came to Egypt, when he was still in the land of Canaan, he said, okay, I will go see my son. I'll go see my son. And then when he went to Beersheba, he still constantly offering sacrifice. He want to know God's will. And then God revealed to him, say that, do not be afraid to go down to Egypt for there I will make you into a great nation and Joseph's hand shall close your eyes. So, okay, Israel, then he went down to Egypt and at that time his spirit is awakened and then he became Israel. But why don't Israel, why don't he want to just went back to Canaan to just see, you know, 17 years is very long. Why can't he just went back and peek a little bit in these 17 years? But he know that it has to be God's will because God's will is that he want this entire family of Israel to be built up in the land of Ramesses because God wants the land of Canaan to be in the process of preparation for 430 years to wait for it, to see whether or not they will return to God or they will just keep sinning and sinning. So until Israel, this entire nation, gets growing and mature and prepared, and then they can leave Egypt and then they can enter the land of Canaan and become the Lord of the land of the Canaan. So now here, Israel, he's truly living in God's schedule. So their families, if we truly mature up, you will be living in God's schedule. Every single step, every single decision, even as tiny as this decision, I just went back to the land of Canaan to peek or where he should be buried. 
every single decision is in God's will. So here, actually, it's not just that he wanted to be buried in his origin. He is intended to respond to God's promise. So even when I die, my son, you ha also have to bury me in the land of Canaan. Joseph, yourself, you also need to know, even though I am the second in command in Egypt, but I should not be buried in Egypt because my family, even though we get prosper and grow a lot in Egypt, but eventually we have to went back to the promised land of the Lord. So this is very different mindset as many immigrants nowadays. Many immigrants, they come and they just get buried in a foreign land. Who will want to go back to their hometown, right? My family now it's here. We have influence in politics and economy in our life. Yeah, it's enough. We should just be buried here. No one will say that, oh, I have to go back home, I have to have my descendants who went back. But here, they don't have this mindset of immigrants. They have the mindset of promise from the Lord. So their families, we, our generation, it, at the most, it's just like a hundred years. But whether or not we can let our son, our grandchildren, they can also follow our footsteps and step into our destiny to know that our family, we are being called by the Lord. We receive the promise from the Lord. So we, as a parent, since the younger age of our children, we have to keep telling them, that we have to step into it. We have to respond to God's promise. We have to believe that the promise of Abraham will be on us. The promise of David will be on us. The promise that Jesus Christ, he fulfilled when he died for us. The new covenant is on us. This is the life that we should live. This is the life that is waiting for Jesus' second coming. We have to keep telling to our children. So today we have to pray to the Lord. Lord, may you let my family to really fear you. Let my family to respond to your promise. Let my family to keep living in front of you. This is the greatest worship we can give to you. And this is also the greatest heritage that we can pass on. It's not about money. It's not about house, but it's the fear of the Lord. This is very important. So next in chapter 48, now Israel, he's dying. And verse three, and Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said to me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you, and I will make of you a company of peoples and will give this land to your offspring after you for an everlasting possession. So Almighty God is a true understanding to the Lord when Jacob at his old age. El Shaddai, this word, was first revealed when Abraham, he's matured, then El Shaddai revealed himself to him. And so you have, should be blameless, walk in front of me. And later on, Isaac also called on El Shaddai that you should fear. And now Jacob, he also truly know El Shaddai, the God Almighty. So today we can pray, Lord, may you reveal to me at every single moment of my life, may you reveal to me that you are the Almighty God, you are the El Shaddai. Let my heart and my family's heart will be completely aligned with you. And also we will fear you. And also the Almighty God can truly reign over my house. So next in verse 5, And now your two sons who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt are mine. Ephraim and Manasseh shall be mine, as Reuben and Simeon are. So before Jacob is dying, he is doing one thing that he will also help Joseph to mature because he is also helping Joseph to step into his destiny so that he is going to make Manasseh and Ephraim into his son. So they are no longer his grandson, but instead it's his son. So it's the same position as the other 11 kids. So now Jacob did this really special thing. He promoted these two grandsons as his son. And next in verse 6, And the children that you fathered after them shall be yours. They shall be called by the name of their brothers in their inheritance. It's very special. So he promoted two grandsons into his son. So these two grandsons are now in the same hierarchy as Joseph. And only the children that Joseph fathered afterwards will be his son. So this is actually a very great honor to Joseph because it allows his son to closer to his father, to be closer to God's promise, to be promoted, to be in the same hierarchy. This is actually a huge honor, a very glorious moment, a huge promise, a huge promotion in God's promise. So next you see in verse 8, 
when Israel sold Joseph's son, he said, "Who are these?" And so remember that Joseph was born by Rachel. Now these two sons born from Joseph because Jacob loved Rachel, so he is promoting these two grandsons. And then verse ten. Now the eyes of Israel were dim with age, so that he could not see. This is the same as his father Isaac when. He, He was old, so Joseph brought them near him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said to Joseph, "I never expected to see your face, and behold, God has let me see your offspring also." Then Joseph removed them from his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand towards Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand towards Israel's right hand, and brought them near him. So Joseph, he clearly knows that he has to let his father's right hand to be on the head of the elder son, and has to be have the left hand of his father be on the younger one. This is a very important arrangement because he has to let Manasseh to receive the blessing for the elder son, and have the younger one to receive the blessing for the second son. They cannot confuse this. For Joseph, he really knows this very clear because they treat the blessing from the father as something really important. So he felt that this is a huge honor, and he felt so much joy in his heart. Now today, my two sons are being promoted to the same hierarchy as mine, and also they become the son of my father. It's such an honor, such an acknowledgement. It's a great promise. It's a great promotion in glory. And then, but in verse fourteen, and Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on the head of Ephraim, who was the younger, and his left hand on the head of Manasseh, crossing his hands, and he blessed them. So he first blessed Joseph in verse fifteen and sixteen. He blessed Joseph. After that, next in verse seventeen, when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand on the hand of Ephraim, it displeased him, and he took his father's hand to move it from Ephraim's hand to Manasseh's hand. So Joseph, he's displeased. He felt very happy a moment ago. He felt that oh, such a glory, such an honor, ceremonial moment, such a promotion. But now he is displeased. Father, you can't see. You're confused. I did not bring them wrongly, but you confused. But in verse nineteen, but his father refused and said, "I know, my son. I know." Jacob, his eyes are dim, but his spirit is actually very clear. Isaac, when his eyes was were dim, his nose was still very sensitive, so he can smell that. Um,、mm, this is the smell of my son Esau. But his voice sounds like Jacob, so he confused. So Isaac blessed Jacob, but it's not like that here. Here, Jacob, he's very clear. This is actually a test to Joseph. So their family. Let's think about it. Now Joseph, he saw that his kids are being promoted. Oh my God, such a glorious moment! Now I dedicate my kids to my father, so I will follow the blessing of my father. I'm willing to promote my two sons into the same hierarchy as me. So they are now the sons of my father. They are no longer mine. They belong to my father. They are the sons of my father. But when my father he crossed his hands, he blessed according to the burden and the will that God has put on his heart. When he do that, Joseph became displeased. Dad, it's not like that. But no, no, no. But Jacob says, No, I know, I know. He shall also become a people. And he shall also be great, and indeed later on Ephraim become the representation of the entire kingdom of Israel. It's called Ephraim. So the tribe of Ephraim is very great. So their family. So here, what is he testing about? You know, oftentimes that we'll feel that okay, I can dedicate this to the Lord. I can offer this my blessing, the blessing from the Lord, all the grace, all the good deeds, the money to the church to present to the Lord, offer it up. But maybe later on the way how church use those resources, how God use those things, maybe God's way is different from what I thought, different from the order that I thought, different from my understanding. They are start to feel unhappy and became displeased. Okay, I offer these things to the church, but church use it this way. Okay, maybe I give this offering to this pastor, but this pastor he handed it to other person. I dedicate this thing to the Lord, but God didn't bless me the same way. You see, other people dedicated to the Lord, offer to the Lord, and they are receive blessing. Now I offer to the Lord, but I got nothing. 
I still have my difficulty, my suffering. So, you know, here this is the challenge, the test that Jacob is giving to Joseph. And it's also the same test that God has for every one of us. So, dear families, now today, you dedicate something to the Lord, you bless the Lord, and you receive favor. Oh, you feel that it's such an honor to be able to do that. Oh, you are so grateful. Thank you, Lord, for accepting my offering. But eventually, the way that God used it, the way that church used it, the way that pastor use it is different from the way that you think about maybe would you just think that oh how can they be like that i will no longer give offering in the future so here joseph he's displeased when he decided to dedicate his son to be the son of his father why wasn't he feeling unhappy about it but now when father's blessing is having an exchange when he crossed his hands joseph became displeased so their family, we really need to be changed. Jacob, here, he has been transformed to someone who is really mature. He is so mature so that God can use him to bless Pharaoh. He is so mature, he knows that Egypt is not our dwelling place. We eventually have to went back to the promised land. But he also is so mature that he decided to follow God's schedule. So in these 17 years abundance in Egypt, he doesn't dare to just went back because he know God's timing. He know that he has to submit under God's hand for 400 years. And similarly, Joseph, he also needs to submit. So in these 400 years, the Israelites, they have to wait, wait for these 400 years so that he can wait they can went back to the promised land of Canaan. This is called maturity. This is called the true knowledge to know God's kingdom. So today, if we don't really know God's kingdom, if we only know God's blessing, we don't know the order, the authority, how God reigns his kingdom. We don't know his order. We have our own preference. And then if other people, if the authority, they don't follow what we think, then we start to feel displeased. Oh, okay, no, 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 forget it, forget it. No, I will no longer give any offering. I will not serve anymore. I will change the church. I am so disappointed by the pastor, by all the minister. Why don't I just stay at home? I'll just worship the Lord by myself. You know, nowadays, so many Christians, they refuse to live in God's order. They refuse to live under the authority. They always think that they are right. My concept is correct. What I see is the most comprehensive. So, you know, when Jacob's blessing is truly responding to God's promise, because God wants Ephraim to become the representation of the entire Israel, this is actually God's arrangement. And Jacob, he knows that God's promise is like that. So their families are we able to help our sons and daughters to really step into God's calling and command correctly. When you dedicate your children to the Lord, but is it possible that you are still hoping that, okay, this child, he still has to follow my own will when he's choosing his school, when he's choosing his work, when he's choosing his serving. You know, sometimes, even though it looks like we offer it up already, but actually we still have a remote control behind and we are still trying to manipulate, even though we offer it to the Lord, but we are still manipulating. So that's why we really need to ask God for mercy to know that how can we pray in front of him today? Lord, Lord, is there anything that I haven't let go? Is there anything I haven't fully dedicated to you? Let God take over. If the way that God lead, if the way that God guide, if the way that God built, if the, the way, the timing that God's thinking about is different from what you expect, He will be able to know that at this very moment, God is also telling you that, my son, I know, I know. So in the end, verse 21, Behold, I am about to die, but God will be with you and will bring you again to the land of your fathers. Bring you again to the land of the fathers. So do you see that? Now here, Joseph, he received a command is that today, we entire Israel, our entire family, in the future, we will be a great people. But we will not keep living in Egypt because God will eventually bring us back to the land of our fathers. So I will give you the land that I took in the past. Now I give it to you. So you have an extra portion. It's in the land of Shechem. So, you know, even though Israel, his eyes are dim, but his spirit is much clearer than every single moment in his life. So here, we want to bless 
every brothers and sisters who are older, bless every parent, even though our body might be weaker compared to the past, our age are getting older, maybe our eyes, our legs, our body are not as strong as before, but may the Lord bless us so that our spirit can be more awakened than every single moment in our life. We can see so clearly from our spirit, we can see God's promise, see God's destiny, see God's glorious calling over our entire family and promise. So may the Lord bless us all. Amen.